You know, I, I, there's a lot of talk over the last two or three years, I guess, uh, about Lee Corso and, and kind of how sad it is to see him go downhill in real time on TV with College Game Day. And I, I, I mean, I'm kind of torn on it. I, I grew up watching Lee Corso and College Game Day and all that. That's kind of, you know, when I first really fell in love with college football, uh, you, you know, that was when uh, all of that was kind of first starting. We saw a similar thing with Vern Lundquist, longtime commentator on CBS for the SEC game of the week. His last year or two that he was in the broadcast booth, he, he, he you know, slurred a lot and stumbled over his words and um, was mispronouncing everybody's name and things like that. And it's just kind of sad to see these people you've seen be at the top of their game in their chosen line of work. It's sad to watch them in real time as they sort of just slowly start to fade away. Such is the case with Nick Saban. Um, I'm no Alabama fan, but I appreciate greatness as much as anyone else does. I mean, I say it all the time. Yeah, Georgia's my favorite team, but I'm a college football fan. I love college football. I like great players. I like great teams. I like great coaches. I like great programs. I like great games. Nick Saban was a great coach quite possibly the greatest college football coach of all time. And it's just really, really sad to watch him in real time just slide downhill like he is. I mean, I don't think there's really even any question or debate this season that just ended 2022 was his worst coaching season probably in his career. Alabama had the most talented team in the country. There really wasn't a close second. They had the returning Heisman winner at QB. They had the consensus best player in all of football at outside linebacker and Will Anderson. They had five stars all over the field on both sides of the ball. And all they did was come out and lead the country in penalties, lead the country in drop passes, lose games to Tennessee and LSU, didn't even win their division, didn't even play for their conference championship. And then during the part of the season that matters the most, conference championship day, in playoffs, is Nick Saban roaming the sidelines? No. He's in a broadcast booth drooling down his chin on national television. Both times. Conference championship weekend, we had to watch some handler prop him up in the booth next to the announcers so he could beg and plead uh, the playoff committee to put an undeserving Alabama team in the playoffs. Thank God the playoff committee didn't fall for the pity routine that clearly was the goal there. Like, oh man, look at this sad little old man. Maybe we should put Bama in. This might be his last rodeo. They, luckily, they didn't fall for it and didn't put Bama in. They didn't deserve it. And then, of course, uh, during the national championship game, they propped him up again on the pregame set. And we had to sit there and watch as ESPN analyst David Pollock looked Nick Saban dead in his cataracts and told him, Georgia is better than Bama. Georgia is the new standard bearer in college football. And all Saban could do was lick his lips and look down at his gut. That's all he could do. He had no response. He had no rebuttal. There is no rebuttal. It's sad to see. It's sad to see. He's desperate and he's delusional. And it, it's just sad to see. I'm not even talking trash about my man Nick Saban here. Um... <laughs> The final rankings came out the other day, which technically don't matter at all. The, the national title is given to the winner of the national title game uh, at the conclusion of the playoffs, and that's the accepted consensus national champion in today's college football. But nevertheless, the AP and the coaches, in an attempt to try to remain relevant, I guess, still put out their little piddly polls. And in the coaches' poll, Alabama was sixth, which is probably where they belong, right? Georgia one, TCU two, Michigan three, Ohio State four, uh, Bama five or six, Tennessee five or six. Maybe you can debate that back and forth based off who's the better team or the head-to-head -head matchup. Maybe you can debate that, right? And that's where Alabama was in, 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 in both of those polls. So good on those polls for putting them there. But Nick Saban's ballot was released uh, for the coaches poll. I actually didn't know this, but I guess it's a requirement that the last coaches poll of the season be made public. So Nick Saban's coaches poll was made public. I'm not trolling. I'm not making this up. You can look this up. <laughs> guess where Nick Saban had Alabama? Dude. 
Now, this is funny to me for two different reasons. Alabama fans think they're the best team in the country every single year, regardless of how many games they lose. And in years where Alabama doesn't make the playoffs, then the fans just run around saying, well, but if we would have been in the playoffs, we would have beat you, uh, which is an unprovable point. So it's funny then that even Nick Saban knows Alabama's not the best team in the country. He knew it was Georgia. He put Georgia at one. But Alabama had no business even being anywhere near number two, as proven by the fact that the coaches poll as a whole had Alabama at five or six, which is where they belong, not at two. But not Nick Saban. In an attempt to make himself feel better, he propped Alabama up and had them at number two in his little coaches poll that he put out. What an absolute shame. It's sad to see a legend like him fall like this. He's clearly lost it uh, coaching-wise. Like I said, the worst coaching uh, performance by Nick Saban in his career occurred this season in 2022. The defense gave up 50-something points and a loss to Tennessee. Pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. You lose to LSU, who's got a first-year head coach and a first-year or a new starter at quarterback, and Jaden Daniels, who can't even complete a pass. Pitiful. Um, Texas, another ho-hum year like they always have, probably could have and should have beat Bama. Miracle win against Texas. Uh, you had to dodge a last play of the game against Texas A&M to hang on to beat the Aggies, and that was a home game for Bama? The worst Texas A&M team we've seen in 20 years? Uh, the Ole Miss game, Ole Miss shot themselves in the foot inside the five-yard line. They actually scored a touchdown. It got taken off because of a penalty, and then Ole Miss fumbled. Alabama jumped on it. Game over. I mean, it so easily could have been 7-5. and five. It's just sad to see how desperate and delusional Nick Saban has come because, like I said, I do appreciate greatness, and you can't argue or deny the fact that there was a time where Nick Saban was the greatest coach in college football. And he is still the greatest college football coach of all time. But he's not the greatest coach in college football today. He's just not. And if you're not able to wrap your tiny little brain around that idea, how can somebody be the greatest coach of all time, still be coaching, but not be the best coach in football today? Well, let me break it down for you on a third grade level so that even Alabama fans can understand it. There's a lot of people, myself included, who think Tom Brady's the greatest NFL quarterback of all time. Okay. That doesn't mean he's the best quarterback in the NFL today. He's not the best quarterback in the NFL today. There's probably 10 quarterbacks minimum that are better than Tom Brady today because Tom Brady's old. But he's the greatest of all time. He's the best to ever do it. The same thing is true with Nick Saban. Nick Saban's the greatest college football coach ever, okay? But he is not the best college football coach in college football today. He's not. I don't have to tell you who it is. You know who it is. You know who it is. Now, in 15 or 20 years, once Kirby Smart has coached as long as Saban has coached, maybe we revisit that discussion about the greatest of all time. Right now, all we really have to compare is Kirby's first seven seasons as a Power 5 head coach and Nick Saban's first seven seasons as a Power 5 head coach. Well, in Nick Saban's first seven seasons as a Power 5 head coach, he lost 31 games, didn't win any national titles. In Kirby Smart's first seven years, uh, as a head coach, he's only lost 15 games and he's won two national titles. So you can see where the trajectory is headed for Kirby Smart, but he's going to have to get there before anybody can convince me that Kirby Smart's the greatest uh, college football coach of all time. That's clearly Nick Saban. But Nick Saban's not the best coach in college football today. And it's sad to see this guy sort of waste away into delusion and desperation uh, while he contemplates which color jello he's going to eat for dinner tonight.